Hold on. I'll be with y'all in a second. Trying to get my stuff situated here. What is going on? Welcome back to another Thursday night live stream here. We got some folks joining us, commenting. I'm having some technical difficulties getting my stuff situated here tonight. Try to get this thing to balance so it doesn't fall over because I'm good about throwing things at y'all if y'all haven't noticed. And I'm about to sneeze too. Man, we got a bunch of y'all joining us. Right. Woo, hold on. Hutch you. There we go. We're back. It's Thursday night. Appreciate you guys joining us tonight. It's, um, man, thank goodness it's May. Because <laughs> if it wasn't May, it sure would be hard to catch fish with all these changes in the water column. Water rises, water falls. Water cleans up, water gets dirty. And there's some other stuff that's above my pay grade, pH balances, and all that kind of stuff that gets affected by all this, too. The good news is when you find some fish right now, they're biting because it's May. Bad news is they change a lot. It's just hard to be consistent right now. That's the biggest thing. There's a lot of different ways. Somebody says lakes suck. <laughs> they don't suck. We're catching, like, I had this discussion about three times a day. Three different people asked me this today on the phone and different stuff and different customers and we're catching a lot of really good fish and we're having a lot of really good days like really big you know best five bag days but man it's just not it, it, like to have two days in a row where you can develop a pattern and do the same thing two days in a row it's uh it just it's not happening very often you might get two days in a row but you dang sure ain't getting three that's kind of seems to be what's going on right now so you better be versatile right now. You better not be stuck on one thing. You better not have your mindset that you got a certain thing that you're going to do and go out there and do that. That's, that's not the way to be right now. You, bet, you better be listening to the cues that Mother Nature gives you, and you better be uh, willing to think outside the box and move around because you need to do that. And, and that's going to be reflected. There's so many different ways to catch fish right now. There's a frog bite that still exists. There's a bluegill spawn going on on the main lake and in the pockets. There's... A little bit of a shad spawn, believe it or not, there is some shad spawn, some really productive shad spawn that's still left going on. There's some deep offshore fish setting up. Um, man, if you wanted to, there's probably a couple spawning bass around the lake if you really wanted to go find them. I've kind of given up on that, but golly, there's a lot of things going on. And uh, there's always a lot of things going on at Lake Fork, don't you know? <laughs> Anyways. So y'all tell me what you want to talk about first. I've kind of got some shallow water stuff and I've got some deep water stuff. You tell me which one you want first in the top five tonight. Uh, the first couple of responses is what we'll go with. Y'all want to hear about the shallow baits or the deep baits? Somebody asked from, oh, sunglasses. Somebody asked from, we'll give you the sunglasses. What y'all think? I'm not sure if this is my style yet or not, but this is what I'm wearing for the summertime because they're white and they're really comfortable and they're cool. And that blue lens... It's phenomenal for the summertime. All right, the first couple are saying deep. These sunglasses, by the way, you can find these at yourlakefortguide.com. You can order them up there. Uh, you can buy them from me in person at the lake if you're on a trip with me. I'll be happy to sell you some, carry some with me to sell you. Uh, but these are amphibious sunglasses. They float. Best lenses in the game. I cannot recommend. Amphibia eyewear enough. We have four different models available. You're like fortguy.com, handpicked by myself and Captain Ron for you guys to wear. Deep, 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 deep. Y'all want to hear about the deep water first? Okay, let's talk about deep water first. We've been cranking out deep, and the crankbait has been really, really effective. Um, Captain Ron, or Ronnie Kelly, he's probably caught more fish on a crankbait this year than everybody else combined. That sucker is a cranking fool. I've caught a few on a crankbait. The crankbait bite's been really good for some big fish. Now, this week, that crankbait bite has definitely faded. It is not as good as it was. That, that being said, some of the more uh, summer type baits are starting to work. And there's a, there's a jig bite. There's a little bit of a jig bite. It's not a great jig bite. But I'll tell you what is getting starting to get bit real consistently every single day. It's two different things. Uh, the first one, I believe we talked about it last week. We'll go ahead and show it to you again because this is a great little bait. This is a six cents divine swing head. See if I can hold it up here with a biffle bug on the back of it. That leg's messed up. Hold on. Come here, leg. 
with a biffle bug on the back. As you can see, it's got a big old hook in it. The thing's got a long hook. It fits that biffle bug just perfectly right at the tail end of that body where short strikes won't get you. But that six inch divine swing head with that biffle bug, green pumpkin is the color I'm throwing. I don't know that green pumpkin is the right color, but I'm dang sure it ain't the wrong color. That's my deal on green pumpkin, guys. Um, that thing right there is getting a lot of bites, getting some really big bites for us offshore when we find them with the electronics. And yes, contrary to popular belief, I do know how to use Lawrence Electronics because Lawrence Electronics are so dang good, even a dummy like me can find fix with them. You know what I'm saying? So that's a bait that's been really effective for us. And then this one, and this one's really exciting that this is getting going. Really excited that this one's getting going because this sucker right here will flat catch some big old, big old, big old fish. <laughs> say it with me now. Everybody say it with me. Big perm. Oh, big pie. I mean, big worm? Yeah, the Magnum Crawler from Smash Tech Custom Baits. That was our most productive bait today in the afternoon. We spent the whole afternoon offshore uh, in the last part of the morning as well. And that sucker right there, hands down, got the most bites by far away. Big deal is we got it on that big shaky head from Six Cents. To me, this is the best one in the game. You've got a big 5 8 ounce shaky head. And the big deal is that is a big old, big old, big old 7 aught hook. It allows you to lay the coal to these big fish and horse them to the boat, take control of them. They can't get you down in that timber. You can just work them over with big perm and that six cents divine shaky head and the five eighths ounce with a seven out hook. Go out, this is a fun bait. And let me tell you the deal with this guys. This worm, the, what makes this worm so effective is it has no salt. It stands straight up. No matter how long you live it sit still, that, that worm will still be standing up just doing this. Just down there talking to them. So you cannot fish this bait too slow. Uh, our most productive deep area today, the reason it was so effective, the reason we caught them and got a lot of bites there was because the gentleman I had in the boat today was willing to fish this bait slow enough. I firmly believe, I threw a crankbait down there, I threw a jig down there, I stroked it, I dipped it, I flipped it, I drug it, I did everything with the jig, nothing. Uh, I took the biffle bug down there and I was kind of swimming it along by nothing. The only thing that got on the bite was fishing extremely slow with big perm and that big old shaky head. And I firmly believe going slow is what got them fish to bite. Now, that's my two best offshore baits. And uh, they're working really well every day, consistently. That doesn't mean you can't catch a crankbait fish. That doesn't mean you can't catch a jig fish. That doesn't mean you can't catch a Carolina rig fish. You absolutely can catch fish on all those. You probably catch a drop shot fish too, I'm sure. Uh, probably can catch a spoon fish right now. But those two baits, are working the most consistently out deep for me. 20 pound fluorocarbon, absolutely. 20 pound fluorocarbon is 1000% what I'm throwing both of those deep baits on. It's what I throw almost every deep bait that I throw on. <laughs> if I'm fishing offshore out there deep water on Lake Fork, I'm pretty much fishing 20 pound fluorocarbon. Was on, here's a quick question. I'm going to try to answer this question so I don't miss it later. Was on Fork Saturday. Question is, at the 515 Bridge West, uh, on the west side, there was some black arrows crossed like an X on my Lawrence charts. Any idea what they are? Those are actually old mines. Um, there's, those are actually supposed to be like hammers crossed or whatever. Those are old mines and mine shafts and mining areas is what those are supposed to be. On the deep points leading up to the main lake, how important is it to have a flat spot on the point? Will the fish still hold there if there is no flat spot? Uh, yeah, they just won't hold in as big in numbers. The bigger and broader that flat spot is, the bigger the schools of fish can tend to be gathering on top of those. Any shallow bite early morning. There's shallow bite. First, A, there's shallow bite all day. So let's talk about the shallow bite. Somebody should ask about shallow bite. First thing in the morning, okay, what I'm doing is I'm fishing, uh, I'm trying, if there's wind first thing in the morning, I want the wind on the point, but I'm fishing shallow, grassy, grassy now. That's the important part, guys. There's some shad spawn left out on the main lake, but that stuff's pretty much overran by sand bass, and it's not real good. Not for bass, it's not. You can catch some bass on it, but it's just not, for me, it hasn't been real good and not real consistent. Now, the big deal is on these grass, grassy points there's still some shad spawning on top of that grass. There's a grass-related shad spawn still going down uh, in the morning. And what I've done is gone downsized in the Dogma. This is the Dogma 100 from Six Cents Fishing. 
By the way, SixCentsFishing.com. If you order anything from SixCentsFishing.com, be sure you punch in the code Your Lake Fort Guide. Get yourself a 10% discount on all orders. But gone to the uh, Dogma 100, the smaller walking style topwater bait. That sucker right there is getting a bite every morning, early morning. It got, we had six, uh, I, don't, I can't remember how many bites we had. We had several bites. We had a handful plus of bites this morning on it, like right off the bat within the first 30 minutes. Um, really good effective bait. It catches the very first one we caught was a five plus pounder um, this morning. So that's working really well. And if it stays cloudy, they'll stay on that bite a little bit longer sometimes. And you'll be surprised. You'll see those shad kind of boiling on top of that grass. They just It's just a real little calm. If it's, if it's windy, you won't see it as much, but if it's calm, you'll see them shad kind of boiling on top of the grass on them points. When that's going down, it's going down. Now there's two other baits that I'm using and I, they're totally shad spawn related because there is a few big expansive grass flats on Lake Fork. Actually, there's quite a few. There's several um, where you can find some shad spawning on top of this grass off and on throughout the day. Because it's not necessarily a point related deal, a wind driven deal, you can find this happening off and on throughout the day. Um, and in that situation, there's a two pronged attack and I'm gonna tell you why I do it. So, see if I can get these rods out of here without making a mess. All right, the first deal is the, the three inch ounce chatterbait, okay? And I've switched up my trailers because it's summertime. When I get to summertime, this trailer right here is absolutely a deadly, deadly, deadly little bait on the back of a chatterbait. Um, first one's gonna be the chatterbait with an impact shad on the back. That sucker, that tail right there has such a fast, tight wiggle on the back of a chatterbait. And it's great as the water gets hotter. That's obviously a shad pattern chatterbait. I've been using some chartreuse and white type chatterbaits as well if the, when the water's dirtier in an area. Uh, but when I see them shad boiling, that chatterbait seems to catch them the best. Now, I'm using that where the grass scatters and I can work that chatterbait through there and I can work it pretty high in the water column and as long as the grass isn't too, too thick, I can kind of work this bait through there and be effective with it. And we're catching some really big fish. We had a almost 30 pound bag a couple days ago, like a 28, right, I mean, that's unofficial, but upper 20s, almost right around 30 pound bag. And every single one of them fish came on the three eight ounce chatterbait on the grass related shad spawn deal. Um, so there's, is there a shallow bite? Yeah, there's a shallow bite. There's an all day shallow bite. And there's some big, big fish on it. Uh, don't get, don't get misconstrued. There's a lot of big fish that stay up shallow year round, especially around East Texas and on Lake Fork. When that grass starts getting thicker and thicker, and I can't really work that chatterbait through there clean and efficiently and effectively. Oh yeah, beat the beat the lamp up, beat the ceiling fan and the lamp up with the rod tip. Bill Dance is coming to the show tonight, folks. When the grass starts getting thicker, I go to the weedless four and a half inch smash tech hollow belly with the underspin. I can point this rod right at the swim bait, and it will just bulldog through all that grass, pops through there. We get the exact same bites. This just allows me to be more effective coming through that grass when it gets a little thicker. I can be a lot more efficient and fish a lot more areas. Uh, if those shad are spawning up in that thicker grass. I can run this, it'll wiggle through the holes, bulldog through the mats, and keep on trucking, man. It's a great, great, great little tool. A lot of fast vibration, just like a chatterbait. So it's the same bite, really, guys. So that's five baits for tonight. Am I catching more fish deep or shallow? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, both. Um, there's plenty in both. It's just, like I said earlier, I talked about earlier, it's just hard to stay consistent. What rod am I using for old Big Perm and the Chatterbait? Um, the Chatterbait, um, I don't know why I'm throwing it on fluorocarbon. I should be throwing it on braid. I'm just throwing it on fluorocarbon right now. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, probably because I got my frogs rigged up on my braid rods right now. Um, but all my deep water stuff, be it the jig, be it the biffle head or the, the, the uh, swing head from Six Cents, be it the big shaky heads, all that stuff I'm throwing on a 7.5 extra heavy Lux rod. 
Um, the chatterbait up shallow I'm throwing actually on the uh, 7.3 heavy is my chatterbait rod. Now, I like to throw it on braid in that grass. And one thing you can do, typically, I should say typically I throw it on 7.3 heavy. Right now, that one's rigged up on the 7.2 extra heavy. And it's got fluorocarbon on it. It works a little better with that bigger rod to rip it up. How many guide trips do I run per week? I run five guide trips per week. I fish six days a week. I run five guide trips. I have one day set aside each week where I go out and do the on the water filming where I bring videos to you guys. It's a financial sacrifice to uh, not run that guide trip on that sixth day, but it allows me to do these videos which help build my business and help me share everything with you guys, which is what I really love to do. Uh, it's a way to reach more people and help more people catch more fish versus two people at a time in my boat every day. So I love doing it. Is there grass on May Lake Point? Some, some. Um, and there's a lot of emergent vegetation on a lot of these May Lake Points. There's some May Lake Points that may have a little bit of submergent vegetation like Coontail and Hydrilla. By the way, when I'm talking about a grass related chat spawn, <clears throat> guys, I'm talking about shad that are spawning on submergent vegetation. Coontail, hydrilla, that type of grass is what I'm referring to there. Not the pond weed and duck weed and all that stuff that grows on the surface. Um, am I still punching grass? Yes, yes, yes. It's just, I'm changing, man. I'm, 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 I'm going out every day, and I have an idea of how I'm going to start, but I got a really open mind. Like, we pulled up this morning, and that topwater bout was good, and it lasted for a little while, and we caught them. And then we went and did something. Uh, we went and chased that uh, shad-related grass spot in the back of a creek. Well, we had a lot of rain last night. That creek got kind of blown out. And the water depth changed and the fish moved or whatever. It just didn't work out. That bite didn't happen. So we scratched all that and we went deep. Well, we found some deep fish, so we stayed with that the rest of the day. Um, if that deep deal wouldn't have worked out, I probably would have went to punching today. I didn't get to punching. I didn't get down that, that far down the list. There's just so many different things to do, and you have to be real versatile and real open-minded every day right now. How deep am I fishing? Well, if you've been listening to this talk, then you'll know. We're fishing from zero feet of water to literally we were fishing out in 20 to 25 feet of water on some of them deep fish today. Have I fished the scrape grass jig? Yes. Yes, I have. I've punched grass. When I punch grass with a jig, I use the scrape jig from Six Sense Fishing. Uh, it's a very, very, very good punching jig. Hayden Marshall says, he saw me the other day going down the boat lane. That is not a surprise. We're running around a bunch right now. The gas bill is high here lately. Would the six cent seven two medium heavy MF rod be okay? I, I assume that's a Millican fishing rod. I haven't put my hands on any of those uh, MF rods yet, so I can't give you a real recommendation on that as far as which ones are good for what techniques. I haven't fished any of them, so we'll see. I actually got a rod tube full of rods from six cents today, so I don't even know what all's in there. We're gonna go find out when I'm done talking to you guys. Coming down the first week of July, any tips for, for July? Um, Man, you know this year it might be, I guess the tip would be to come back the, the Thursday night before you come down here because we'll talk about what's going on at the lake right then. I hate, I'm hesitant to give you any kind of prediction because this year's been so unpredictable. So much rain, cooler water temps than normal. I mean, yeah, it's June, guys. It's like June tomorrow or day after tomorrow. And we have water in the mid 70s today. Like, it's just the water temps are cooler. They get hot, then they cool off. I mean, they, it just keeps changing back and forth. So, Alex B <laughs> says, Zach, my dad said you better find, oh, find him some drill. Oh, I got some drill found. We got plenty of hot drill found. Don't you worry about that. Uh, pad perch is doing good early and late. Yeah, the frog bite is still there. In fact, I was talking to Captain today. Captain Ron, they caught the frog fish pretty good this morning. They had a bunch of bites on frog this morning. So, um, What size line do you use when cranking deep water? You know, 
I've had this conversation like the people ask me, and I tell them I'm, I'm cranking with 20 pound fluorocarbon, and people are like, "What? Why? Why are you cranking with such big line?" Well, I'm cranking with such big line because it's Lake Fork, and I fish a crankbait a little bit differently than most people. I I go way against the grain, and I'm sure that I'm wrong for the way I do it. It's just the way that I like to do it. I actually throw it on a big eight foot, way stiff, too stiff of a rod for a crankbait. I throw it on 20 pound line. But my deal is on these big crankbaits, uh, the C9, uh, Cloud 9 C25 crankbait that I'm using most of the time on these deep fish, uh, they got big old hooks, big hooks. And I actually like to crank, 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 crank. When I get that hook, when, when that fish bites and I pull into him, I stick my rod and I horse him as if it was a big swim bait or a big line throw or something like that. And, and I just put my rod as far down the water as I can and I start horsing. And I reel that fish in as fast as I can. And the reason I do that is with that big old treble hook, I just view it just like a line through, a big line through swim bait. You got a big old treble, like it's a big treble hook on the baits. Just wrench them in, and as soon as they get to the boat, slide the net under them. That's how I do it. So for that reason, I use 20 pound line. Now, here's the deal. With that C25, I can hit 22, 23 feet of water. I can dig it. I can dig that crankbait in 22, 23 foot of water. The key is I'm throwing it on an eight foot heavy action rod. And I can, if I'm throwing downwind, I can throw that bait so dang far that I can still get it down there to 22, 23 foot of water and hit bottom. Um, that's all I'm trying to do. If I can hit the bottom in 22 and 23 foot of water, then I don't need to downsize my line any from that because I'm hitting bottom in my target depth anyway. I'm not trying to, I, mean, I guess if I was trying to crank it and get it down to 30 foot of water, I'd probably go down in line size. Uh, but right now. Seven two medium heavy moderate fast I think is what he was asking. Um, yeah, a seven two medium heavy moderate fast would be a good chatterbait rod. But if you're gonna throw it in grass, you better do that on braided line. The deal is when you're ripping a chatterbait out of grass a lot, you either gotta have the no stretch of the braided line and the cutting ability of the braided line, or you gotta have a stiffer rod to be efficient in that grass. Now that being said, when you have that stiff line or stiff rod for a chatterbait, you can't set the hook. When they bite, you just got to kind of reel into them and reel set it like a crankbait. Um, and you got to have that discipline to do that. And they'll hit that chatterbait real hard and it's hard not to swing on them, but you can't if you're going to fish it where it's efficiently, where it's efficient in grass, then if you go to swing and the hammer on them, you're going to miss a lot of fish. You know, ideally on a chatterbait, you're going to throw it on about 17, you can throw it on 20, but about 17 pound fluorocarbon. And you're going to throw it on like a 7.3 medium heavy, 7.2 medium heavy type rod. That's the best for the hookup ratio, but man, that can be a pain in the butt in grass. It can be hard to get in and out of that grass. Timmy Rhodes in the house. Good to have you. Better late than never. Absolutely. What time do I get on the lake every day? Six o'clock. I meet my customers at six o'clock and we don't eat breakfast or nothing. We meet at 6 a.m. and we roll out. Six six medium fast for spinner baits and cranks in the yak. Yeah, I mean that sounds good to me. I don't know if that was a suggestion or what. Somebody said they ain't heard Ronnie Kelly talk about the turtles lately. <laughs> it's because he's fishing out deep and he don't see them turtles out deep as much as he did when he's up shallow. How much do we charge per day? We charge $500 per day for one or two people. What do I do if my customers want to eat a trophy bass? I tell them no. <laughs> if I have clients that want to eat a trophy, I mean, I mean, straight up, no, we're not keeping bass. It's not happening. Mm -mm. You can... Not like me, give me a bad review on Yelp and never hire me again, but we ain't eating bass. We dang sure ain't eating no big bass. It ain't gonna happen. T229, what's going on? Mr. Todd in the house. What's up, buddy? Trying to catch up to some questions. I know. Is PK, is Possum Kingdom gonna get a refresher on the Fish Life app? 
It is not. It goes away. As it says in the description, the Possum Kingdom is actually going away. Uh, we'll, I'm going to talk to my guys. We'll leave it up through this weekend. But no refresher on PK. It was a one-time deal. One of our app contributors from another lake that helps us with another package actually went out to PK for a week, mapped out some spots. We sold it as a part-time package. It says it right there on the package that it expires and it's going away at the end of the month. I uh, do. I know when Ray Roberts updates next for Fish Life. Well, I can tell you this: all the packages, some of them, many of them, have updated this week. We got brand new information on them this week, right now. Um, if they don't have it this week, they'll have it the first part of next week. So it's always going to be right around the first, give or take a few days, one side or the other. It's hard to coordinate all those at the same time and get all that information put in. But it's always right around the first of the month. Um, I think Ray Roberts is already updated, but I have to go back and verify. If not, it will be at the first part of next week. What is my ice fishing setup? Uh, my ice fishing setup is this chair right here um, and a little bit of brown water in a cup and some football on the TV. That's, that's my ice fishing setup down here in the state of Texas. If it gets so bad that it likes ice over here, that's what I do. Have I ever caught any smallmouth on Texoma? I've never fished Lake Texoma, so the answer is no. I have never caught any smallmouth on Texoma. Sorry, I'm trying to read questions. The Twin Cities Outdoors is telling me to come ice, ice fish Minnesota. You know, there's a guy that frequents Minnesota pretty often that I know that I've become friends with now. And I may, you know, no, I'm, I'm lying. I'm not coming ice fishing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not doing it, man. I don't like it when it gets that cold. I do not like it when it gets that cold. Oh, God, I'm interested, though. The ice fishing deal is interesting. It's pretty cool. You sit there, drill a hole. Like, I get it. You sit in one spot, and you catch them. Like, it's, it's intriguing. I just don't know if I... I mean, I don't own enough clothes to go ice fishing. I'd probably die. Okay, here we go. Here's my boy ZW helping me out. So on the Fish Life app, Fork, Athens, Lake of the Pines, and Texoma have been updated. All the rest are coming within the next few days. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Oh, so let's we gotta talk about something, folks. We gotta talk. Captain Ron, he done joined us. He done joined us. Captain Ron's joined us, and he's bringing up the juicy topics. You cannot, you know, one thing about Captain Ron, you can always depend on Captain Ron to bring up some of the best topics of the night. Now, there's a rumor going around the lake that you know you may have heard on some of these other fishing videos. Which, by the way, we had to start five minutes late because. I want to make sure you guys had time to watch some of the other junk that gets posted out there. Um, it is not true that 10XDs can kill you. In the history of the world, nobody has ever been killed by a 10XD. So if you may have heard out there that, you know, deep diving crankbaits or... You know what, actually, 10XDs probably do kill you, but the Sixth Sense Cloud9 C25, it won't kill you. It won't kill you. I promise... Nobody's ever died in the history of Earth. Nobody has ever died from a deep diving crankbait. So if you heard that rumor, you might want to consider the source. I'm just saying. The walleye are very good. I've heard walleye are like the best eating fish ever. Oh, I can't keep up with the comments. The comments are getting crazy. Somebody says they've been tempted to smoke a few people with a 10XD that they fish with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you do want to be cognizant of where you're throwing a 10XD or, or I would prefer to say a Cloud 9 C25. That's what I would prefer to say. You do want to be careful when you're casting big rod, you know, big long rod. But you know what else we do? We throw we throw an eight foot rod with a big old swim bait with a treble hook hanging off the belly of that sucker and nobody seems to be scared of those, so. <laughs> or big top waters or anything like that. Uh, 
Z Dub says he's slung a 10 XD at a few jet skis with bad intentions. That nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly within the rule book of fishing. Who would you suggest to take me out to help with electronics on how to use them? Well, you know, I'll tell you this. Anybody that fishes full-time pretty much is going to use those electronics a lot. Um, now, what you want to do is get with somebody that's using the same model, same brand as you are. Good thing is at yourlakefortguide.com where you can find a guide to fit any need. Um, Ronnie Kelly, Captain Ron, he's using hummingbirds and he's getting those suckers real dialed in. We actually have some video coming up showing how Ronnie's using those electronics on a day-to-day -day basis. And myself, I use Lowrance. So if you've got Lowrance or Hummingbird, you can just holler at us at yourlakefortguide.com and we can get you fixed up and help you from settings to how to identify different species of fish, what we're looking at, what we're seeing. Like we can give you the full rundown on electronics anytime you're ready. Everybody's talking about what their preferred bait is to throw at jet skis now. We've got three quarter ounce football jigs. We've got three quarter ounce lipless crankbaits. <laughs> Anybody else got a suggestion on what the best bait to throw at a jet ski is? I mean, I, this is something I'm really interested in. Really, really, really interested in. Um, somebody asked, is Ronnie running the Solix or the Helix? He is running the Solix, and he is very, very, very good with them. I have seen this in person myself this week that dude has got that daggum side imaging deal going and them fish ain't got a prayer if they come within 100 feet of captain ron's boat they are found jack i can tell you he can tell you how big they are he can tell you how many black spots they got on their lateral line when he looks at them on the side imaging eight ounce swim bait <laughs> somebody's like no man you can't see that's where i disagree them daggum big old swim baits are too expensive to be throwing at jet skis just my personal preference there on what you should throw at a jet ski. Somebody says a jet ski will always win that fight. You're right. They'll always win that fight because they don't care. <laughs> See, they're going to come out the winner because they don't care how mad you get. It's funny to them. What trolling motor do I use? Uh, you need Spotlock. Um, yeah, you do need Spotlock. Spotlock's amazing. Um, I use Nultrex. I use Nultrex. Two-ounce pyramid weight. Now, that's good. If it's an old two-ounce pyramid weight A... That one might actually kill somebody. B, <laughs> it's real cheap, man. Them two-ounce lead weights are real cheap. So that's a good one, I think, to throw at somebody. Although, I don't know, you might really hurt somebody real bad with that. I should probably state that I'm only kidding. This is not an official endorsement to go throwing baits at jet skis. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, I don't want to see a jet ski get hit with somebody's bait and I get sued next week because you know how things are these days. Man, you guys are killing me in the comments. I cannot keep up with all y'all. Ball and chain. The ball and chain. You like to throw the Carolina rig at somebody? I could whip around their neck. That'd be awesome. Captain Ron's got the Helix. Somebody asked if Captain Ron's running the Helix with Solix. He's running the Helix. Uh, when, oh, God, that was a good question. That was a good question. And I missed it. I lost it. Oh, sometimes they come in too fast. You guys, y'all are having too much fun with the jet ski deal. There must be a lot of jet skis out there right now already. <laughs> Anglers attacking jet skis is going to be the headline in the news. Uh, when are the sensory rods get released? and you get your hands on a lot are you going to use the century over the lux i'll still use both um i will still use both i think the lux for the price point that it's at is as good a value as anything you can find the century are going to be 249 i think that's as good a rod as you can find i think that's as good a rod as you can put in your hand period and it's a lot cheaper than some of the other 400 dollars options out there and it's unbelievable feeling and sensitivity and everything's about it. Uh, I've had a 7.7 Heavy in the Century Series for quite some time now. I boat flipped some big fish on it. It's a good rod. It's durable. Uh, I've put it through the ringer. Um, yeah, I'll use the Century rod over the Lux, especially on a, on a 
technique that I need sensitivity on, but a $250 rod is not for everybody. And that $160 rod, you know, that's a really good value for a really good rod in that Lux Series package. Um, just throw it at a bumblebee looking ski. Don't be throwing nothing at my skeeter, man. Marcus Fowler out there trying to tell you how to throw stuff in my boat. The old bumblebee looking skeeter. A, that's the Batman boat. It's the Dark Knight. Or, AKA the banana boat, if you, you know, prefer. Um, I'll take the name either way. But, no, don't be throwing no baits at my skeeter, man. That's not cool. <laughs> Does the new boat lanes chip have any updated trails on it? And would you recommend it? Um, I recommend the boat lanes chip. Uh, it's been around for a long time. It's been really good. It certainly helped me once upon a time. I don't have a boat lace chip in my boat. Uh, I do a lot of the old school run at that tree and turn at that tree and line up on that hill. And, you know, over the years, I've just learned a lot of stuff where I just run it like that. I don't even have boat lanes on my, my graph. I just run where I know to run. God, I gotta get better friends. ZW, you're killing me with the Nighthawk reference. Killing me. Holy cow, we've been on a long time. Somebody says they're a Steeler fan, so they love my boat. Well, I'm not a Steeler fan, but I love my boat anyway. Because it's an awesome boat. Because it's a Skeeter FX. Limited edition. It's even got cool pimp rims on it. When I roll up in the parking lot, it'd be looking good. You know what I mean? I'm, the funny part about it is I'm not like a fancy guy. Like I've always been like a basic bottom line function guy like I've never had like fancy vehicles or I've never done anything aftermarket to a truck that I've owned um, but it is nice to have nice stuff and I've been blessed and nautical miles to take good care of me and uh, I want to have the nicest rig I can have for my customers that's why I have nice stuff now it's for my customers not for me but it is nice to have nice stuff and that FX limited edition, it don't get much nicer than that. I'll take if I, I tell people all the time. They ask me um, if I had all the money in the world and money was no object, I'd be driving the exact same boat that I'm driving right now. I love it. I love it. Bass Slayer says he went out with Captain Ron yesterday, and he can definitely show you the bass on the helix. He can, man. That dude is great, great with them Bird Electronics. How's the rain and cooler temps going to affect the fishing for the next few days? Well, we've kind of been talking about that all night. Um, I, it's just you got to be real versatile right now. You got to, you, I think you got to have an open mind. I think if you get stuck on one thing, uh, it'll bite you. I think, you know, patterns. As far as like patternistic fishing where you got into the same thing every day right now, it's just, there may be a couple guys that are on that. It's not me. It's not me or anybody I talk to, which I don't really talk to anybody. So I don't know what other guys are doing, but I know for me, it's, uh, <laughs> we're going everywhere from zero to 30 feet. So I don't really know how it's going to affect it. I just know I got to go out and react to it every day. I try to go in with an open mind without preconceived notions. I'll have a starting point in mind and I just go from there. Whatever I, pops into my head so what length worm for the shaky head out deep uh, the magnum crawler from smash tech is the one I'm throwing I want to say it's an 8 and change it's an almost 9 inch straight tail worm it's 8.25 or 8.75 inch uh, straight tail worm giant trick worm basically is what it is mojo fishing what's up Billy what's up mojo Hey, I got your dad's text. I need to get back with y'all. I haven't had a chance today, but I need to get back with you. I did get your dad's text this morning, so tell him I said I saw that, and I intend to talk to you guys. Somebody was asking something about the mouth of Birch. I live in the mouth of Birch Creek. Do you ever do good in this area? I did in fall, but not much luck lately. Um, well... Birch Creek had a lot of dirty water in the spring this year, like a lot. I love Birch Creek. I normally fish it religiously in the springtime. I didn't fish it near as much this year because how dirty the water got in there. Uh, there's some good offshore structure out at the mouth of it. It's really popular 
<laughs> if you watched the Bassmaster Elite Series tournament, you would have saw that it's really popular. Like the guy that won the tournament was fishing there. Um, but you know, yeah, it's real good. And there's definitely some schools of fish out there right now. I fished it a little bit. There's a lot of boat traffic in that area. So, but I mean, it's Lake Fork. There's a lot of boat traffic in a lot of areas. And a lot of the stuff, the offshore structure stuff that we try to fish all over the lake, man, it's like take turns rotating boats. It's one of the reasons that I always have kind of leaned towards the shallow water bite the later we get in the summertime because the higher percentage boats can settle on deep water structure, the more I tend to go back in the backwaters and go hunting some grass. Because if there's grass, there's always bass. Make no mistake about it. This is probably a question for another day. No, we can answer this question. It's a great question. How did I meet Captain Ron? I met Captain Ron just being around Lake Fork. I don't remember exactly what day or what time we met i know the first time that we really hung out and uh we actually back back in the day this has been years ago but we drank a few beers together and then we found out that each other were marines and it was like well now we're just brothers uh for life so um it was at i want it was at a tournament it was after a tournament there was a bunch of us hanging around kind of drinking a few beers after a tournament I want to say it was the very first guys tournament that we did like six, seven years ago or something. But that may not have been the tournament it was at. I've known him for a long time, that's for sure. And uh, he always keeps it interesting, you might say. <laughs> Timmy Rose says, according if you listen to both of us, it's probably the nut hut. Probably, probably was the nut hut. Definitely we've shared the same nut hut, that's for sure. Man, we've been on for a super long time tonight. I really appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome, man. Um, there was a bunch of you. There's still a... Look how many... There's, God dang, man. There's a lot of people watching live still. That's unbelievable. What color Shaky Head Worm is producing? Watermelon Red, Watermelon Magic. I think either Watermelon Red or Watermelon Magic would produce right now. I'm throwing Green Pumpkin. And I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. I throw green pumpkin because I don't know I don't know that green pumpkin is the right color. I just know that it's definitely not the wrong color. Like that's my deal with green pumpkin. Uh, plastics out deep. Like they're not gonna not bite it because it's green pumpkin. They might bite something else a little bit better, but they're gonna bite green pumpkin. It's safe bet in deep water. Last question I'm gonna answer tonight, or I'll just keep talking to you guys forever and ever, man, because I love y'all. I love y'all, man. It's so awesome that you guys join us each and every Thursday night. We got our seminar coming up a week from tomorrow. We will be announcing a big, big giveaway. Well, we think it's, it's really not that big a deal. But we think it's kind of a big deal because, you know, we think, yeah, it is what it is. Um, anyway, so if you can, please join us the night before the Skeeter Donor Tournament. Join us at Lake Fork Marina at 6 p.m. We'll be in the upper room up there in the Lake Fork Marina Tackle Store. Join us for that. Uh, if you need some new sunglasses, get these at yourlakeforkguide.com. Got four different models of amphibia glasses, best on the market. Uh, that's it. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm just going to tell you thanks. Yeah, it's tornado season. Watch out for the weather. It was crazy around here last night. So, uh, I haven't heard of anybody getting hurt in the Canton deal. There was Canton got whacked with tornadoes again. I, ha I didn't hear anything. Of course, I've been, I'm always out of loop. I fish so much. So, if anybody got hurt in Canton, God dang, prayers for them. Prayers for the town anyway. I know there's a lot of broken stuff over there in canton once again from the tornadoes that's my next door neighbor i live in van canton's the next town over man those poor guys have been getting whacked with tornadoes the last few years so um if you get a chance to fold your hands together and say a little prayer for canton please do all right guys i'm gonna wrap it up thanks for watching we'll see you next time right here on your lake fort guide